Hello, my name is Ten Dudak, and uh, on the page, uh, on the paper, the agenda, there is Sakar Lahti. So, if you have any complaints, don't send him complaints. Send them to me. And I'm from precast segment, so I will concentrate my presentation to the precast part. I will talk a little bit uh, the general workflow of precast because. I don't touch it very much because uh, we have listened uh, this part in the morning. Then a little bit about structural detailing. Again, this is already gone over this part of topic. And the main topic will be about fabrication, CAM and ERP systems. I will explain them a little bit later. And uh, finally, I will touch also the uh, topic of storage delivery and installation. So the general workflow normally starts with the conceptual designing, the first phase when the uh, clients and project managers are analyzing and comparing different alternative designs. So this is the co good part when they want to see if the uh, project, which, which design or which uh, alternative design is the fastest, easiest and most cheapest one. And uh, here comes Tecla quite handy because we, like we can have said, uh, seen before, uh, we can plan better and also take the quantities out. And the taking the quantities out in the early phase is especially good for the dendering uh, phase also. Like we know, a lot of estimations and uh, dendering bits are made just on speculations. And that's why the bits are sometimes a little bit higher because the general contractor has more risks and so they have to put higher prices. It means the uh, better quantity or mark more accurate quantities means lower risks to the um, general contractor and also it means better price for the uh, client. Later it goes, the if the project gets green light, it goes to the detailing, analyzing phase. There are different parts, uh, architects, they are using, for example, SketchUp, Archicad, Revit, whatever. And then there are M MIP engineers with different softwares. And of course, uh, structural engineering, you, uh, we, have, we recommend the Tecla. Tecla itself don't do the analysis calculations. That's why we have different opportunities to cooperate and change the information with different uh, programs. Like in the morning, we saw the blue ball. And then when we have finished the detailing and uh, analyzing designing phase, the information, the model with all the information goes to the fabrication. There are the CAM and uh, actually the ERP systems are over all over the project uh, workflow. Uh, after the, I will talk the fabrication part later more. The, when the details are ready, then they, are, then they will go to the construction site where they will be installed. And after the project has been finished, then there is also construction maintenance. And this is time where we can do the looking back the project, look what went good and uh, what we can learn for next time. As we, we saw before also, there are things always to learn and it's important to look back. That's why there are only a few logos of different softwares and systems that are here, but lastly I checked, uh, Tecla can cooperate and uh, change information more than 125 different programs. So, and there are not only EFC file, there are many different type of files and we provide the exchange of the information. As we can see here, in the normal, um, a lot of cases, uh, all the workflow don't go as linear like this here shown. So the processes can be parallel and the information workflow, information exchange goes back and forward. So. In this case, Tecla and BIM site are very good tools for exchanging the information between different parts and approving cooperation. 
So detailing phase, I try to go it fast. Uh, first of all, we have Tecla structures that's meant for the detailing and uh, doing the 3D model of the fabrication detail level. It's very important to have uh, precise and uh, good detail level to, that we can use for the fabrication. And also, it don't matter how complex are the structures or the materials. We can have even the uh, composite materials. And of course, the links would be in different software. Then we have also free, totally free uh, programs or software that you can Google from Google and download them for free. These softwares are meant for the coordination and collaboration with, between different parts and beams. We can put there different beam models. It don't have to be from Tecla. It can be from um, RTGCAD or whatever beam model like we have seen before, and we can compare them, uh, change, see, uh, see the conflicts, or communicate by pictures or, or comments. So about detailing, we have here one model, and uh, we look just one small uh, connection. The connection, at first, we can do very roughly, especially in the conceptual design. We don't need to um, do the old connections. Here we have a column, and the uh, two beams are even overlapping, but it is OK. In first phase, we still have qu can get quite good quantities. And here we can see the uh, Tecla don't have 2D lines. We have real 3D objects that has the name. Here is the beam, uh, its um, uh, profile, height, weight, uh, volume, area, uh, the position, and even we can put the, for example, fire resistance specifics. So, but we have we have also the different components that we can use from the library. They are ready to use. And there are quite many standard side compo um, composites. So all the uh, connections that we can use there are parametrical. It means we put our numbers, how we want to modify, or how we want these connections to get. And we even can save these, so we don't have even every time to put these numbers or parameters in. We just use them in the connection, and it's quite easy to use. Also, the embed, about embeds, the bigger companies like Peiko, Semtu, Halften, Anstar, they all are on the web pages free to download different their embeds, and we can use them very nicely and easily in our um, model or our project also. So in these cases, case I have added some embeds, and also if the standard side uh, connection are not enough, even with these parameters, we can easily adjust them, modify them as we need. This is about Tecla, we can do what we need, really. For this simple example, I have uh, changed the uh, bar anchor to one uh, Peiko anchor bolt. After that, when we have done a new component or modified the old one, without any programming skills, we can save it and use it later on this project or even in other projects. Often the companies have their own libraries, do have their own most useful, or that they use more the um, components. After we have the connection, we need to put the reinforcement in. Tecla, again, you um, gives opportunity to do different kind, any kind of uh, reinforcement in with basic tools, like here, this kind of reinforcement you never use, but it shows it can be good the reinforcement bar can go everywhere you want or you need it. Um, but we can also use the components, like with the connections. Uh, they are different, and even the lifting anchors. We just 
select the component, choose the parameters, what are the dimensions or the thickness of the rebars, how many, how, how they are placed, and uh, quite easily we can use them or use them in our model for re reinforcement. Also, uh, after we have modeled the, our building or our construction, then we can generate. We don't draw the drawings. Uh, they are generated automatically according to our company style or how we want to present. It can be different, for example, columns are with one style, beams with one style, um, wall panels with reinforcement with one style, without reinforcement another style. With templates, ready-made templates and rules, we can easily uh, define how we want to present them. All the uh, information that is shown here is accurate and according to the model that we have done. There are all the measurement geometry is correct, all the embeds and all the reinforcement, everything that we need for the fabrication. Um, but still, sometimes we, we have to do some changes uh, in our project, one or another reason. In this case, I show, I show how we changed one uh, beam height from 1,000 millimeter to 700 millimeters, and we can see all the re reinforcement changed automatically, and also the connection that we had changed automatically. Also, when we open the drawing list, then it, sh uh, it so shows us which drawings or parts are modified, so we can look them. And uh, in the drawing, Without doing nothing, the uh, drawings and the data is updated automatically. And inside the Tecla, it even shows with the little clouds which data or what was the modifications in the drawings. Without doing nothing, it's everything automatic. Also, as all the information is up to date, the reports also are up to date. On the left side, we can see the table or uh, report of the beams before the changes. Uh, and on the right side are the beams that are after the changes. We can see uh, marked with red. There is one beam, the profile, the height is uh, changed. The beam length is the same because we didn't change it. And the volume weight I changed again. And these all, this means that all the model drawings, reports, all the data are always up to date. We don't have to change it different places. And there are no conflicts between um, these parts in, the, in one project that we are giving away. So there, that means there are less errors. <coughs> After we, we have the <coughs> model and all the information, we can go further to the fabrication. There is the CAM, it means computer-aided manufacturing. Uh, it's all about controlling all the machinery that we have there and uh, control all the production. So we have basically three th different types. Uh, on left up, we have the rebars rebar uh, machineries. Then on the right side, we have the uh, wall panel and mesh machineries. And on down, we have the holoco machinery, for example. And all over the world, we have seen how different factories are improving their automation and uh, they're improving their quality and production. So. Here are some the um, rebar fabrication machineries, and up there are some softwares that can help. <coughs> so rebar produ production, standard way or the old way, standard way, 
is the, all the drawings are done at first manually, the detailing by hand, quantity calculations, tables, and as I, as I was an engineer myself before, civil engineer, I know that can lead some errors. And there are some, it's easy to make uh, mistakes there. Later, all these drawings are going to the fabrication where every bar are typed in their bent, their bent, their shape. And we can get these bar codes that are shown there also. And after that, we can uh, insert the data to the machinery and then the production will be. This is the semi-automatic way as we have the human part and we have the automation part. But still there is quite a lot of human part and it means also there can be human errors. But always there is a full uh, manual way that all the measurements are done also and the bendings are done with the manually, like in these work benches. The better way or more automated way would be as we have the model, uh, Tecla model with all the information, we can uh, also the rebars information, the bendings, length, uh, material, everything. We can easily export with BBBS format, standard format, for example, and send it to the uh, product system that controls the machinery. So in this way, we just only have to do the build up the model and then there is no, there is everything automatized. This information can be transferred via internet or USB stick. But this kind of solution uh, is especially good when we have the mass production and P quantities, when where the product system there uh, also optimize and organize the product flow. But so if the production quantities are not so big, then we can directly export from Tecla the, this, the same barcodes and feed them manually to the machinery. And here is one example of this uh, machinery, how it, uh, the rebars coming, they are cut and bent. It's after the, they have the information, it goes quite smoothly and nicely, like you can see. So the next is the concrete wall banner factory inside. There normally also the, all the drawings are made, uh, detailing, quantity calculation, scheduling, all are made by hand. At, again, it can lead for some errors. The drawings are going from hand to hand. There are quite a lot of labor work and not very much automation. So. Again, the other way or the more automated way would be to start with Tecla model or whatever kind of model where we have all the information already. Then export these elements information with, uh, for example, in this case with Unitechnic format there are project data already, elements data, embeds, reinforcement, whatever is needed for the fabrication. This information goes to the master computer that organizes and takes care of, of the machinery, different machines. And these master computers also organize and optimize our workflow so we have less waste. Here are some examples of the uh, Unicam, for example, software. That's the master computer software. We have, can see the pallets there, reinforcement, and uh, we always can uh, get the overview, the live situation, how it's going, the workflow in fabric. Then there's the EBOS. Late 2000, here we can see the uh, pallets and shutters on the pallets. And here's one example of the semi-automatic production. 
where human work is needed, but still the automation part will help to uh, get the better results and quality to put the places in the right, correct places and install them. Also for curing and lifting the different uh, elements are uh, uh, um, operated by human but with machineries. And then there is quite fully automatic way that SAA will play this also. Here we can see we have the model <laughs> done at first, then the information are sent to the uh, fabrication where they control it the elements of the production will be optimized and uh, mm, organized nice way and then the fabrication will start at first there are shuttering robots that will do automatically the framework and also shows with ink the different openings it's all quite uh, very automated and precise the framework is um, fixed with the magnet connections but then they can be reused This is the how pallets go for the next. All that moving of the pallets is automated. Uh, there is some small human work needed, but after that it goes to the reinforcement part where the meshes are already welded together or the meshes are done beforehand. And here they are only placed to the right places. Uh. And there is left uh, all in all of the project. They have left also some time for uh, other reinforcement. Like I said, it's not totally automated, but most of the things are automated here in this case. And then there is a uh, concrete curing. The the automation puts right uh, amount of the concrete and the, all the thicknesses and the layer layers are with the tolerances uh. also when there are openings then the machinery knows these also can read and put the concrete in the right way in double wall production cases uh, there is one part one panel is already made and hardened and uh, another panel that's still soft will come down there and the ready-made panel are turned around automatically and uh, just put together so we, in, the, in the result we have nice double wall with very good surface and quality After that, in the again master computer, we can uh, send and organize the, to the curing camber to send these all panels there.
funnel they, they will be demolded and after that sent to the stockyard where they can use the same barcodes and barcode readers to have the overview of the situation there and just to overcheck. After that the pallets will be scanned and de shuttered with the robots. The robots will take off with these magnets and this uh, framework can be sent again to the re reuse. And the ballots go back and the, for the new round. These are going to the stock, yeah. Okay, stop here. So with the Holoco uh, panel factory, it also starts with the drawings that are standard way made by hand. And these drawings <coughs> go also to the factory. In this case, we can see the extruder machine goes in front, then it's on side. Then somebody measures with the tape measure, do the markings with spray by hand, and some somebody else on the back comes and does these holes with shovel or boot or whatever they have there. As we as we know, it works also this way, but. Maybe there is some other way also. In more automated way, there is <laughs> extruder machines that do the job and the human just have to be the check that control it, that everything goes smoothly. Then upper right, we have the plotting machine that has in top, it has different lasers to measure to have the um, correct places to do the markings. Uh, and on this right picture down here, we can see not very well in fact, but in the middle there is a line, the cutting line for uh, two separate panels. And also it puts a uh, mark position, position number of the panels and different holes. So it's made more accurately and automated. One Holoco plotting software is, for example, Elipos. Here we can see also the data has been brought from Tecla, for example. There are the panel openings, and this is the program that we can pre-check and also control it, uh, look it when it's on the factory. After that, I would li talk a little bit about ERP. Enterprise resource planning is the basically the same that we had before the VICO. It means that defines all the aspects of business and information management. And the aim of the ERP different uh, software is the continuous and efficient workflow in the all through during the all the processes. Uh, and giving always the overview what's going on. So again, we have the Tecla structure model with all the detailed building model, quantities, and 4D visualization. There are 3D geomet geometry and 4D is the time that we can include there also. These information are exported to different ERP programs the project data, elements data that was needed before, like we saw, and erection se sequences. And then ERP does it project management, workflow management, product planning, optimizing. Uh, and because of that, all we can save money, time, and minimize the waste. 
also. That's what about Tecla. We can export and import back the data. So we can take back these different fabrication statuses and plan fabrication dates. So again, this means sh sharing the information back and forward. There are also other uh, software like Petsi, SAP, that's Finland, very common. Uh, RIP, th this is five dimension as also the cost part like Vicohat. And uh, like Sampo showed before, and I said we can give the information and take it back. Then Okay, it's ah yeah, it's moving. Now. So in this case, in every every date, we can see the gray ones are not installed yet. Elements, the red ones that are installing right now, and the green uh, ele green ones are there that's already installed. Every date has it. We can check the how is the situation and and like and th this means that we can communicate, give the better overview to other participants without going through all the paperwork. Quite easy and nice to show what's the situation and how it's the plan. About the warehouse and delivery, as we have in the beginning, the Tecla model with all the information, we know the elements, weights, then we know the schedules when they have be on construction site and we can do the different delivery set, set so put them in correct order that they go nicely and with uh, one good workflow. Also we saw before this machinery can be, transport machinery can be automated or manually and all the element status can be tracked always with BIM ERP systems or manually check, over check with printed tickets or the PAR codes. We have always the information, correct information uh, in computer and we can check where are the elements, how is going with them and when they should be somewhere, for example, in construction site. And of course, these nice visualization tools to collaborate and improve the communication, for example, with site manager and fabricators to be sure that the elements will arrive on time to the construction site and the right elements will arrive there. And when the trucks are coming for the loads, then we can check out the builds very fast. So also, for the construction sites, there is the installation part where site manager can draft and visualize the all uh, site plan beforehand the real installation will start so again we can plan a little bit more before and uh, have nicely like here are the cranes stockyards everything we can plan beforehand that really happens in the, on the site then there comes the installation and this should be also be planned beforehand it goes to the site because if we plan nicely uh, correctly beforehand then on sh site construction site there are a lot of le uh, less errors and some problems like we heard before the general contractor again the communication using BIM in the construction site a lot of bigger companies and companies that are already quite high level are using this uh, opportunity and uh, it's very good way to, especially when on the construction sites, all the laborers are not so clever. So it would be very easy to show them on pictures on, on the building model, what has to be done and how it has to be done. And also the status information uh, what we can do like this with Excel sheets or what's going on on the 
construction site, but also it's with the documentation very good. If something goes wrong and we have to order a new element, for example, from a factory, then we can check it also to the model and see it later from model also that this part is something wrong and we we are waiting for a new element, for example. So our general message um, is that although Tecla structure is quite cool, good tool for detailing accurate models with the fabrication detailing level that's really necessary. Don't go for the cheapest offer because like we heard before, some softwares even can't uh, export uh, good IFC file that's really important than these small detailing things that are if you spare in the in the beginning, you save some money. Then later, the quality don't uh, give these savings, and we have to change it anyway. But the real benefits, if we are looking only this engineering part, then it's not profitable. And the real benefits come out when we look the whole project together, entire project, because the the first phase is. Uh, don't cost relatively so much, they are quite cheap and uh, normally I'm from Estonia and they don't like to put the, they say like, let's do it as fast as possible and as cheap as possible. So they can skip the first and a little bit the sec second phase also to save some money and the uh, time, but still the main part is the later comes where they are the real uh, the money goes more and also the final um, the time it's take more if we are doing their mistakes so we have to put emphasize more that we have to um, think through the plans and uh, plan the first stages more do the analysis and then later these bigger phases go more smoothly and with less problems Mm, and this means also that we have all communicate together and cooperate together. That's why we are not only the modeling software, we also emphasize very much the cooperation between different parts. There is the real benefit. This means also saving time, tick tech clashes like we saw before the problems before they get to the construction site because if they get to the construction site then they take a lot of more time and they cost these preparings or solving the problems. Again, communication in office between different parts that everybody understands the project the same way. Even I know also some cases when uh, they haven't used the drawings to do the buildings and uh, we have to share the information in smart way not with the papers only there is smarter way also to monitor and and uh, plan all project so we have done also some case studies that you can find uh, Tecla web page and uh, of course many reference models and reference cases that are quite some of them are quite complicated but doable and even better to do with Tecla so thank you very much <laughs>